Hello again. We are starting a, a new verse by verse study, uh, and that is in the book of First Timothy. First Timothy. Of course, you know this is a, a letter. You probably know this is a letter that was written to Timothy by the Apostle Paul. He um, had several New Testament books that were personal letters uh, written to specific people. Timothy was obviously one of those people. Um, as Paul wrote these letters, they were personal letters to, you know, and in this case, from Paul to Timothy. But I think he also knew that the, the information in this letter would be widely circulated so that others would uh, be able to read it and uh, be helped uh, by it and be taught by it. And guess what? That includes you and I. So many, uh, you know, years later, 2,000 years later or whatever. So uh, this is uh, always going to be important uh, subject material for us to understand. And in order for us to kind of get set the stage, and I think that's going to be the title of today's lesson, Setting the Stage, um, I thought I'd just share with you a little bit about you know, the Apostle Paul and Timothy and how they how they came together. This is by no means an exhaustive, you know, uh, study. Um, and uh, but, you know, it gives us a, a frame of reference. OK, so um, and I'm going to start just by reading the first two verses of this book. And then we're really not going to dive into the exact details of these two verses, but we're going to talk about Paul and Timothy, okay? So it starts, and it, and it was the the uh, traditional way when they, when they wrote a letter back then to uh, start the letter by introducing the letter writer. So if I were going to write a letter to you, I'd say, hey, this, this is Mark, and I might give a brief description of who I am, and then launch into the information of the letter. Whereas, you know, in modern days, it's kind of perhaps more, you know, uh, opposite, although it seems that in the year 2024, letter writing is something that is kind of falling by the wayside. Um, and just as an aside, if you ever want to impress somebody, not superficially or insincerely, but if you really want to sincerely give people the true impression that you are thinking about them, that you're praying for them, that you care about them, write them a letter and go another step. Don't type it. Don't just send it on a social media post. Use your hand and write in your hand a personal letter. Stick it in an envelope, put the address on it, put a stamp on it, and let them receive that personal letter in your own handwriting. I guarantee you, in the day that we are living today, that is going to make an impact on people. If you take the time to do that, it tells them that you really are thinking about them, that you're praying for them, that you care about them, all those things that we talked about. Okay, so it says, 1 Timothy, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from, our, from God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord. So there it is. Introduce himself. Said who the letter is for. Let's talk about Paul and Timothy. You know, he calls himself here an apostle. Now, this is an important word. And it's a word, unfortunately, that's being misused in our present time. Um, the, the word apostle. Okay, um, sent out one. Uh, but there was some specialness, some uniqueness to the apostleship of Paul that 
was not true for other people at the time and is not true for anybody else that came after him. That may seem like a you know, surprising statement to you. So where did this idea of apostles come from? During the ministry of Jesus Christ, he had, at times, multitudes, thousands of people following him. Probably most of the time, it was a smaller group of people. They, they were all disciples, okay? And, you know, if you want to use a mathematical kind of a, equation, is that um, all apostles, this is during the ministry of Christ, okay? All apostles were disciples, but not all disciples were apostles. What do I mean? Jesus called out 12 from amongst all the disciples. Disciple, a simple uh, a term uh, saying a follower. Those that were following Jesus, literally following him around wherever he went. Okay? Out of those disciples, Jesus called out 12 Apostles. Now, I talk about apostles in this sense as apostles with, with a capital A. Okay? So they had a special, uh, unique calling and title given to them so that they then would be given the authority and the, the, the power, the responsibility, all of that, to go out and share the message that Jesus would be giving them. And today, it's a simple word that we use, the gospel message. So they would be sent out. Now, we're all, as Christians, uh, uh, have the responsibility and the opportunity to go out and, and, and talk about the gospel, to preach the gospel. We all, we all have that. But these 12 were special in that they have special God-given, unique abilities, talents, and uh, responsibilities to 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 go out uh, and and uh, you know preach the gospel, go into the cities and tell them. And Jesus literally did that um, d during his ministry. He would send them out, and he would tell them what to do. He would tell them what to expect sometimes, and it wasn't all good. But then they would come back and they would report, and sometimes they'd be excited, and sometimes they'd go, "Boy, Lord, this is hard. We couldn't do this." In one particular occasion, we couldn't, you know, cast this particular type of uh, demon out of somebody. So anyway, that this was a special apostleship, okay? And that was the 12. But then, guess what? There was one more. There was one more that was added later on. And that, of course, was the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul did not walk, did not follow after Jesus Christ during his ministry. And in fact, he was an enemy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was an enemy of Christians. Listen to what he says, the Apostle Paul here, in the book of 1 Corinthians, another letter written to the Corinthian church, okay? And in this, this uh, letter in the 15th chapter, he was talking about the gospel in a concise form about how Jesus you know, uh, lived, died, rose again, uh, was seen of people after that. And then he says in verse 8, it's in that context, he says, and last of all, he'd already been talking about how that Jesus appeared after he arose from the grave and before he ascended to heaven, he had appeared to people. And then he says in verse 8, and last of all, he was seen of me. Jesus appeared to Paul. Not at the same time that he appeared to, to the other disciples and apostles, but he appeared to Paul. Well, when did that happen? Well, the, the other story, obviously, is, is the road to Damascus story. And Jesus appeared to Paul at that time. So he says, uh, he, he, uh, last of all, he was seen of me, also, as one born out of due time. I was out of sync with the other guys. But, I saw. 
And then he says in verse 9, For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Okay, so on the road to Damascus, the Apostle Paul had an amazing conversion experience. I can't pretend to tell you how that I understand every little element of what happened in that experience the Apostle Paul had, okay? I, you look at that conversion experience of Paul at, on the road to Damascus, and you can see all kinds of theological truth within that. You can see the theological truth of God's foreknowledge and predestination for the Apostle Paul personally. But you also can see Paul's belief in that he also, he was presented with the opportunity and Paul believed. And I think that's what starts the process of fulfilling the life that the Lord Jesus Christ had for the Apostle Paul. But it was a very, very unique experience. Struck him down, made him blind. Uh, the people that were with him, you know, saw this. They didn't hear the voice, but they they saw the, the whole thing. He went on into Damascus. Um, and, you know, it's just a fascinating story about how the, the Lord began to put things together for Paul. Saul at that time, who would become Paul, they put things together and give him a ministry. And that's what Paul says here, by the grace of God, I am what I am. This is in verse 10, the first Corinthians 15, and he goes on to say, and his grace was bestowed upon me was not in vain, because I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God would, which was with me. So the Lord gave Paul a new life, a life dedicated to the furtherance of the cause of Jesus Christ where he had been completely opposed to it and had participated in even the murder of God's people. Wow. The arrest, everything. He was sold out against Christianity, and now he was a partner. And he was a apostle, capital A, apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's important. Today, that word is used. Uh, it's used amongst Catholicism in a way in which it, it's just not meant, is not true. And even outside of Catholicism, there are movements today, they're called the New Apostolic Age, where pastors are referred to and believed to be apostles. There's no capital A apostles anymore. What did Paul say in 1 Corinthians? And last of all, he was seen of me. Paul was the last true apostle. We talk about the apostolic age. There's no new apostolic age. There was one apostolic age. And roughly speaking, it was the first 100 years of the history of the church of Jesus Christ. And that was the apostolic age, basically the end of the first century. And when the last apostle died, which most believe was the apostle John, then that apostolic age died with him. And now we have everything we need in the completed canon of scripture. And we have our own commission not as a capital A apostle, but a little A apostle, if you want to put it that way, of, hey, we've been sent. We are called of God to go out, preach the gospel. And so uh, there's where we are. Paul was a true, unique, first century capital A apostle. And by that, he had authority. 
He had re responsibility, he had authority, he had power to be able to fulfill the ministry that the Lord had for him. He was, in his own mind, first and foremost, I believe, he knew that he was a product of God's grace. That's what he talked about. He said uh, in verse 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. He knew he did not deserve it. He did not earn it. It was given to him. We need to think long and hard about the grace of God. Because we all, I believe, we all as a human being have a tendency to want to frustrate the grace of God. And it comes from this basic inner need to believe that we somehow are good enough to be accepted by God. We really want to believe that. We think, oh, well, okay, if I, if I do enough good things, God is going to honor that and appreciate that and accept me because, after all, I'm a great guy, right? I've done all these great things. The Apostle Paul never spent one moment of the rest of his life once he became a true child of God, believing anything other than the fact that it was only by the grace of God that he is what he is, that he was what he was. Grace. Don't frustrate God's grace. It's uh, You need to understand, all our righteousness are as filthy rags in the sight of God. Paul talks about he wants to be found having righteousness, but not his own righteousness, but the righteousness of God, which was freely given to him through God's grace. Paul knew he lived and breathed God's grace. He was a living, breathing example of God's grace to man in his own person. He lived that. He was an example to that amongst uh, everybody else. And he knew that he couldn't do this by himself, too. And so when he officially began his ministry, he needed, and he did have, partners. And in that partnership, he was able to uh, get through the experiences that he, he would have. First it was Paul and Barnabas, and then it was Paul and Silas, but there were others that were very closely associated with him. And one of those people that was so closely associated with him was Timothy. So let's talk about Timothy for a minute. Timothy, a very young man, perhaps late teens, early 20s when Paul first met him. He lived in the town of Lystra. You can find that in Acts, the 16th chapter. Timothy had a Jewish mother and a Greek father. He was trained by his mother and his grandmother in the scripture. Now, let's, let's make sure what we understand. Because when you and I think of the scripture, we think of Old and New Testament, the Bible, right? Well, they didn't have the New Testament yet written in a completed form. So uh, his, his mother and his grandmother trained him in the Old Testament scripture. Remember, he had a Jewish mother. She knew about the Old Testament scriptures, and he was trained. He understood. He had a good, good concept of uh, the word of the Lord uh, in the Old Testament, and I believe that he was probably primed and ready to recognize and accept the Messiah when he comes. And so his his you know if you if you see his life as that as that ground, you know, that fertile ground, 
he was ready to hear the gospel. He was ready to accept the fact that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. So when was that? When, when did that happen? Well, guess what? Paul comes to town. Paul comes to town, and uh, during his, probably his first uh, missionary journey, I believe, and obviously uh, encounters Timothy, his mom, his grandmother, and they all accept the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the Christ. So they all become true believers. And then Paul begins to hear some great things about Timothy, about his character, about his willingness to uh, talk about his faith in Jesus Christ. And so then Paul begins to develop a very close, close uh, personal relationship with Timothy to the point to where Paul calls Timothy his own son in the faith. Not a literal physical son, but his son in the faith, a spiritual son, so to speak. You know, we are, we're all part of the family of God. That's a spiritual family. And Paul viewed Timothy as a young person that God had his hand on. That Timothy had special gifts that God had given him. He also had some challenges. He had probably had some form of chronic illness that was always going to be with him. Paul knew something about that himself, too. And so none of us are without challenges in life. But Paul had his, or the Lord had his hand on Timothy. Paul recognized that and took Timothy under his wing and began to mentor, to disciple him throughout. And so then Timothy, especially during the last part of Paul's ministry, Timothy was, you know, most of the time at Paul's side, experiencing the things that the Apostle Paul experienced as they went through the ministry together. He was not just a partner in ministry, but I believe he was a true companion of Paul. Timothy, I believe Timothy loved Paul, committed to him, and Paul to Timothy. It was a love relationship, and it was a pure, beautiful love relationship. But then Timothy needed to begin as his growth to, to expand and go out on his own. And so ultimately, Timothy became the pastor of the church at Ephesus. And when Paul writes his letter to Timothy, that's where Timothy is. He's in Ephesus. He's the pastor of the church. Now, I wish I could sit here and tell you that being in church ministry is nothing but joyous and beautiful and harmonious and never presents any challenges. But that wouldn't be the, the truth. There will always be challenges in the ministry, the work of the ministry. And unfortunately, even as early as this is, in the AD 60s, there were already problems. And the problems were doctrinal heresies. We're not going to get into them in this lesson today. But there, there were these doctrinal heresies that were in the church of Ephesus. And so Paul is writing this letter to Timothy. And it's not really a deep exploration of, of doctrine. It is practical advice that Paul is giving Timothy of how to deal with with these issues that are in the church, these heresies that were in the church at Ephesus. He's given the practical instruction of how to handle this, these situations. And so, in the short amount of time we have, I hope we've kind of set the stage. Paul then begins to write this letter and talk about to Timothy the issues that are before him and how to try to handle those issues. I want you to once again read with me the first two verses 
because this is the common theme. And we'll talk about these three things um, in next lesson. When Paul says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by uh, the commandment of God, our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith. Here it comes. Grace, mercy, and peace. Grace, mercy, and peace. From God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. There is the common theme of the Apostle Paul's ministry. Grace, mercy, peace. We're going to talk about those three things in our first main main lesson from from this uh, chapter. Verse three, he start he gets into the practical stuff. He he says, you know, in verse three, I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia. So you know, he's setting the stage again. But it's always in the context of God's grace. God's mercy and God's peace. All three of those things come from God. All right. I hope you're uh, uh, anticipating uh, the opportunity of learning more from God's word in this book of 1 Timothy. And uh, pray for me as I uh, present these lessons and we all go for this wonderful ride together, so to speak, uh, in one more of, uh, of God's you know, glorious books that he has for us in his word. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Thank you.